Hey friends, Anne here. Thank you so much for coming back and joining us for worship today. So before we get started, I'm going to send you on a little errand. I would like for you to pause this video and then go get a coin, any kind of coin, doesn't matter what denomination it is, doesn't matter how much it's worth. I just want you to get a coin to look at as we move through this next part of our teaching today. So have you ever had a time where someone asked you a question about something that it seemed like they were curious, but yet you knew that really what they wanted to do is kind of trap you or trick you into saying something that would prove yourself wrong and prove them right, or something that would trick you into saying something that would offend somebody else that was there? Have you ever had that time where you just knew it wasn't right and they weren't being honest? Well, today we're going to read about a time when that's exactly what happened to Jesus. And so grab your coin because we're about to go to scripture and we are going to be reading in Luke chapter 20 verses 20 through 26 about this time that has to do with the coin that someone tried to trick Jesus and we're going to see what we can learn about it. So let's go ahead and get started with the first part of this, this uh, passage. Watching for their opportunity, the leader sent spies pretending to be honest men. They tried to get Jesus to say something that could be reported to the Roman governor so they could arrest Jesus. Teacher, they said, we know that you speak and teach what is right and are not influenced by what others think. You teach the way of God truthfully. Now tell us, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? So friends, first of all, let's just go ahead and make sure that we notice something really important about this question. At the very first part of this passage, it says the leaders who continued to question Jesus and continued to try and trick him up, they had realized this was not working. And so what they did was they sent spies, actors, to pretend to be honest men to pretend to be people who were really genuinely looking for the truth. And they came and they began to ask Jesus questions. And what they asked him was first with a compliment, okay? They said, teacher, they're calling him teacher. They're acknowledging his authority. They're saying, hey, we know that you speak and teach what is truthful, what's right. So they are affirming him as a very wise teacher, even though they did not believe it in their hearts, even though the people who sent them and probably paid them for this acting did not believe that as well. And they asked him a question that really was a lose-lose kind of question. The question that they asked was, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And here's what's significant about that question, is that no matter how Jesus answered it, it would offend somebody. And they had just said, hey, we know you don't care about what others think, that you always tell the truth. So tell us the truth about this. And the way that they were hoping that he would answer is either yes, it's right or no, it's not. Yes, it's right to pay taxes to Caesar would then offend the Jewish leaders and the Jewish people who said, hey, Caesar is not our God. He is not the one who provides for us. So why should we be honoring him in that way? If he said, yes, it is right for them to pay taxes to Caesar, then, um, or sorry, if they said, no, it's not right to pay taxes to Caesar, then the Roman governor would come after him, and then he would be arrested by the Roman governor. So what was Jesus going to do in this sticky situation? Well, we hear that he is wise and that he knows something that the rest of the crowd does not know. And he answers a question with a question, which Jesus often does. And this is what he says. He saw through their trickery and said, show me a Roman coin. Whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well, then, he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So they failed to trap him by what he said in front of the people. Instead, they were amazed by his answer and they became silent. Friends, Jesus saw right through this facade of 
um, of curiosity that they were presenting to the people. He saw right through the mask that they were wearing of this acting, and he knew exactly what they were trying to get him to say. But what he replied with was so much more important than the fact of whether or not they should pay taxes. If you look at the coin that you have, whose image is stamped on that coin? For me, I have a U.S. quarter, and if you will, just put in the comments as you're watching this video what coin you have. I have a quarter, I have a dime, and I have a penny. And on my quarter, George Washington's face is stamped on this coin. And then on the penny, that is Abraham Lincoln. And on the dime, that is Roosevelt. And these are leaders of our country in the past. These were very important people that were in charge of our country, in charge of our country's finances and economics. And so we honor them in that way. And what Jesus is saying is, hey, whoever's face is stamped on there, then that's who it belongs to. But he also says, but give to God what belongs to God. And friends, what does that mean? I mean, if you look at a coin that has a stamped image, okay, yeah, that belongs to the government. But what is it that has God's image stamped on it? How do we know what we are to give to God? And friends, here is the beautiful thing, is that there is this concept called Imago Dei, which means, actually, actually means, physically looks like God. It means that we are made in the image of God. We, because we are cre the creation, cre uh, created in the image of the creator, we are stamped with God's image. If we actually go back very, very far in the Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 2, verses 26 through 27, this is what we read. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Friends, you and I were made with the image of God stamped upon us. Not that God physically looks like us or we physically look like God, but the way that we were created demonstrates a little bit and reveals a little bit about God, about his nature, about who he is. So what are the ways that we have God stamped upon us? What are the ways that we are called to give what is God's to God? Well, here are just three of the ways that God's image is stamped upon us. The first thing is mentally. Mentally, we reflect God in our ability to think and to reason and to choose and to feel. All of those are elements that are true of our Father. And he has placed within us that ability to mentally be able to think about things and reason and to seek out logic and to choose the right way that he is calling us to go in. To feel feelings in reaction to the things that we are experiencing in the world. All of those are reflections of how we are mentally created, just like our Father. And then morally, we were created to reflect God, a reflection of God's holiness, his perfect love, his righteousness. We were created to be reflective of God's holiness, to live our lives in love, to live our lives in pursuit of righteousness. We were created to reflect him morally and to do what is right, and to love what is right. We were created to reflect God socially. If you'll notice, back in our scripture, it said, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. 
we know from the Bible that God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God is one God. There are not three gods, but there are three aspects of God. And that is this beautiful mystery called the Trinity, where there is three in one. They are in perfect communion with each other. And we were created to be social creatures, to seek out that same communion and connection with other human beings. Friends, you have God's image stamped upon you. But then we also know that sin came into the world and marred that image. It clouded that image. Just like if I look at one of my coins, this penny is kind of marred and it's kind, it's very old and it has dirt and grime on it. So you can't really see the image clearly. That's exactly what happened when sin came into the world. And we read about this in Romans chapter 5, verses 12 and 21. Verse 12 says this, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. And then in verse 21, So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, when we come back to God in a right relationship through Christ, we reconnect with the image of God that is stamped upon us. As we live into that relationship, we more clearly reflect God's image to the world. We are more able to give to God what is God, to be able to reflect him in the way that we live our lives. Friends, this is what I think is so important about this passage, is it's not just about taxes, but it is about how we give ourselves. So friends, Who are you giving yourself to? You are stamped with God's image. Give yourself to the one you represent. Give yourself to the one whose image has been stamped upon you. And how do you do that? You give him your very life. You surrender your will to go your own way and to live in rebellion against the Father. And you turn to him. And you live for him. You surrender the things that hold you back. You give to him and surrender everything. Friends, that's what it means to give to God what is God's. Friends, when you accept Christ, you reconnect with that image that has been stamped upon your heart and your mind and your soul. And I pray today that you will give to God What is God's? Give yourself to him. Surrender. Because he is the one whose image is stamped upon you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift and the ability to be made in your image. Thank you for giving us the ability to reflect who you are to the world. God, we know that sin has marred that reflection. It has clouded your image that has been stamped upon us. And so right now, Father, we just ask you to clean us. And we know that the only way to be clean, the only way to be purified is to come to you through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Because he is the one who paid the price to clean us from our sins. And Father, as we continue on with our day, I ask that we will look for ways to give ourselves to you, wholly and fully devoted to the mission and the ministry that you have called us to, to be disciples who make disciples, to reflect your love in the world. Father, thank you for stamping your image on us. Help us to reflect that well. In your name I pray, amen. Jesus saved the sinner of it all. 
Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end I will always be, it's always been you Jesus Oh, oh Jesus Jesus at the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus oh, You, Jesus Nothing else matters Nothing in the world Jesus, you're in the center Everything revolves around you Jesus, you Jesus be the center of my life From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus Oh, you, Jesus Jesus be the center of my life Jesus be the center of my life From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus Oh, you, Jesus Nothing else matters Nothing in the world Jesus, you're the center Everything revolves around you oh, Jesus, you Jesus, you're the center Everything revolves around you Oh, Jesus, you Beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Friends, thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Today we heard that we are to give ourselves to the one we represent. And I hope that you have done that personally. I hope that you have made the decision to reconnect with God the Father and let him clean off that uh, sin-marred image that has clouded your reflection of him to others in the world. And friends, if you have done that, then I encourage you to ask yourself this question, who is your one? Who is the one person in your life that Jesus is calling you to share that message with? Who is the one person that Jesus is giving you the opportunity to reflect the stamp of your maker to the world? Friends, God has already put someone in your path who needs to see the image of God displayed through your life. So who is that one? And this week, the challenge is how can you reflect and display the image of God that has been stamped upon your life to that other person. 
And friends, don't forget, we're continuing to read through the book of Luke, and I hope that you will notice that in all of our social media channels, you will see a reading guide for this next week so that you can continue to read through the Bible with us as we finish out the book of Luke. Friends, have a very blessed day, and I look forward to interacting with you this week and seeing you back next week for worship. Nothing else matters Nothing in the world will lose you Jesus, you're the center Everything revolves around you Jesus, you're